happy Wednesday, everybody. I don't know what my hair is doing. And there we go. It's Kate Richberg. And welcome to Bead Shop Live. It is Wednesday, December 28th of 2022, if you are watching live today. And it's our last uh, live Wednesday broadcast of the year. We have one more broadcast this year, which is Friday, which is Free Tip Friday. We're going to be doing some special things on there, and I'll talk about it at the end of the broadcast today. But <clears throat> it's kind of tradition. I see so many people here. It's great to see all of you all here. Oh, my goodness. Yes, happy <clears throat> uh, after Christmas and Hanukkah and current Kwanzaa and upcoming New Year, all of those blessings of the season to all of you. Um, but it's been kind of a tradition around here. Oh, you can see a little bit of my mess over there. Let me move this over here. There we go. Now, it's been a little bit of a tradition um, for me these past few years to do a wrap bracelet called Year End Wrap right? And so this year, and I'm going to show you some new stuff that we just launched. We launched some new product and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make an unconventional wrap. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. So I'm calling it the boho wrap and I've named it legend. And I'm going to tell you why when we look at it. Um, and there's all kinds of little tidbits on here on this piece. So we're going to talk about some different macrame knots. We're going to talk about how to um, add um, some beads to this. We're going to go over some gluing. It's going to be a show that's just chock full of knowledge. Before I get into it, <clears throat> two things. I want to say that uh, Gita is over on Facebook moderating. Hello, our Gita. Janice is over on YouTube, and we've given Gita, I mean, Gita, I'm, I'm thinking of you, Gita, because I can see your comment right here. Uh, we've given Janice the power to go backstage. So when she moderates, she can put the question up on the screen and uh, it goes out to all of our feeds. So Gita, don't stop linking. Don't stop doing any of that. You can see Janice has power right there. So Janice is commenting at beadshop.com. Gita, we uh, want you to throw those links in as well. We cannot have too much or too little linking. So we really, really appreciate that. And it is true. We are all one big happy family and I'm glad you're feeling better. So uh, happy uh, belated holidays to you. Um, so Yes, we do. We have magic powers here behind uh, behind the scenes. I also have a new uh, camera trick that I'm going to show you today. I've been working on my camera skills. And I think you're going to, uh, I think you're going to like it. So without further ado, let me get uh, started on... Uh, a couple of things that I want to share with you. As always, before we get started, you can find us on all of our social at beadshop.com on our Instagram, at the bead table on Facebook. And of course, you can hit that like, subscribe, notification, and share this broadcast out from uh, our YouTube channel at beadshop.com. You can find all of the fantastic products that I am using on today's broadcast right on our website at beadshop.com because folks, without you and your support of our uh, small business, we would not be here without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, every order that comes in, we always give a big hurrah. So um we really appreciate your support. So without further ado, let me add this camera in. Here we are. Look, it's real clear. It's pretty clear if I do say so. There me, 
do that. So I've got that there. And I'm going to practice real quick like here. Um, I'm trying to get you as clear of a view as we can. So check, check this zoom ability out, friends. Oh my gosh. I think, I think it has been, oh, and I'm wondering where these comments are coming from. Janice, you're putting those comments on there, aren't you? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? Yes, thank you, JP, putting the comments on the screen. So uh, yes, so hopefully your view will be the best it can be. So, <clears throat> and I'm seeing comments about people uh, saying that, uh, they have a little bit of time, uh, between the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday that they are, uh, being able to watch us live. So I really love it. And I'm really happy that you all are here. So let me show you folks what I've got here for you today. Um, this is our newest of the new, um, I guess we're calling it round braided cord or leather cord. Um, this braided cord, it's kind of like a bolo cord, right? And we carry, uh, I'm looking for my, my um, millimeter gauge here so you can see it. It's kind of like our smaller braided bolo cord uh, that we carry, um, but this is a five millimeter. And so um, it's nice and chunky. It's great for bracelets. We also um, got some new clasps and sliders here that I'm gonna show you in just a second. But let me show you, oh, it's cold out here, so my, my, I think I need a new battery in this thing, but you can see, maybe you can't. Um, this is, let's, let me re-zero this. Yeah, I think I need a new battery. Oh, live broadcasts. Uh, let me grab the other one off my desk so you can see it. But that's a five millimeter cord right there. And so the five millimeter is a little chunkier than our old bolo, our old bolo braid. And um, someone just texted me. Drea did. Sorry, let me put this on uh, do not disturb. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Um, let me turn this on. Well, poo on you millimeter gauge. It's time for new batteries. That's a good resolution for the new year. Put new batteries in your millimeter gauge. Like I was saying, five millimeter here. Okay. And we got the three new colors. We got it in this green. We've got it in this black. We've got it in this whiskey color and we've got it in this brown. So I used the brown for the project today, but I'm also going to share with you this black cord here. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you um, some of the new pieces on this black because I love the way it looks as well as, uh, we're going to go back and forth between these two because I want to show you how I started these knots over here and stuff as well. Okay. So let's take a look <clears throat> at, uh, how this bolo cord fits into a couple of our, uh, clasps that we have. We launched a few weeks back, we launched these barrel clasps and I love them. We launched them for Kumahimo. Okay. And these are a five millimeter Kumahimo clasp and we call it a barrel and see there's the, the, the magnets on the inside there. And these fit this cord really nicely. I've got a few tricks to share with you to get this cord inside here because when it's cut, it can kind of, you know, ruffle out a little bit. So I'm going to show you how we do our gluing there. So these fit beautifully and I'm going to use this cord on what I'm making today. We also, this is the nut and bolt clasp 
that also just launched. And take a look at this pretty thing. And let me, they're super, um, I need to see which side opens. It's hard for me to grab onto. There we go. So see how that's like that little round portion and it goes right into that clasp right there. And that end opening slides right on to the end of this cord. Okay, like so. Now, <clears throat> let me let me zoom out a little bit. This zoomability, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm excited by it, uh, really gives me a whole new piece on life here with the live broadcasts. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a little bit of this leather away. Not a lot, but a little bit as I cut it. So it narrows it down just a little then you can see I can slide these sliders on into there. And I have three of these that maybe I'll just do two. I'll slide two on there for now. We'll see. Okay. And yeah, this is a super strong magnet closure on this clasp and it just glues right in. So if you're looking for, if you're making a belated holiday gift for someone, um, especially someone who likes pieces that might have a little more of an edge to them, especially with the black, this is a beautiful piece to do it, right? Um, this round uh, leather is just gorgeous. So, and also I, I hate to mention it before it's 2023 even, but if you have someone in your life who kind of likes this silver and black kind of look or any of these others kind of look great with this green, um, <clears throat> this would be perfect for Valentine's Day. It's coming up, folks. So um, I know I hate to mention it even before we're in January, but, you know, get your gifts done early, I say. So let's take a look at the piece that I made, this year-end wrap. And the year-end wrap, I call it, I'm going to put this aside for a second, I call it legend. And I'm going to tell you why I called it legend. So <clears throat> I have been kind of, as I'm trying to clean up and stuff, you know, for the new year, tidying things up, I like to put movies on sometimes in the background. I don't know if you folks like to do that as well, but something that's kind of familiar, right? So I can have the noise or I can listen to the story, but I don't actually have to really watch it. So I was perusing through one of the online platforms. I can't remember which one it was. And I came across Legends of the Fall, right? With the trifecta of Brad Pitt and well, it's more than a trifecta and Anthony Hopkins and Aidan Quinn and Julia Armand. And I can't remember who plays the youngest brother. It was kid from ET. Sorry, kid from ET. Anyway, I was kind of feeling that Montana turn of the 20th century Western vibe, especially since this Bolo cord has kind of a lasso feeling to it. And so I called it Legend because I was working on this while Legends of the Fall was playing in the background. So that's where that comes from. Now, this may look kind of like a big old mess to you here, but I wanted to leave each section, and we're going to go over each section. <clears throat> I wanted to leave each section uh, open while I... Um, was doing this so you could see how I go ahead and glue and stop the piece or whatever. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the different things that I used. So for this section, and all of these are over that five millimeter cord, you could also use our three millimeter braided bolo cord if you wanted to scale everything down. It wouldn't quite have the same visual impact and you'd have to use a different clasp, but you could do that as well if you wanted to make it smaller. I'm going to zoom in again because I'm pretty excited about it. There we go. So this is our traditional macrame. But do you remember way back when, and I, I want to revisit it when we revisit the prairie um, 
project in 2023. Janice did that prairie that had the beading over the top. And so I mimicked that technique a little bit, but I mimicked it in a pattern. So I chose some ADOT seed beads. And this one is the 4514, the Picasso Seafoam. And then this one is the Rainbow Ivory, the 4691 in the ivory. Um, and I really, really like the way that that looks. And I did it in this little flower pattern here. And I'm going to show you how I did that there. Okay. So, uh, so this was a story here, and I'm going to show you that one. Next, remember last week how I did those special little knots that I did with, I have the sample sitting over here somewhere. It was this one. Here it is. Right? This is exactly the same, but I did it in the antique brown one millimeter leather. And the way I'm starting and stopping this one is I'm silk wrapping. And I used for the Ceylon, I used uh, the bronze and I used the Celadon for the green. Okay, I think it's the bronze. Janice, double check that. Would you? I, all of a sudden, I'm worried that that's wrong. <clears throat> Next, I've done just our traditional traditional, beautiful, flat macrame with the beads across from each other. And I used one of my favorite beads in the whole wide world, the antique copper ADOT metallic seed bead. You can see that there. I used the terracotta, the 1236, because to me, this is so Legends of the Fall right here. Oh, and thank you, Gita. Yeah, the bronze and the Celadon Ceylon are correct. Perfect. And then I used, how could I leave them out? My favorite bead of all, um, the regular shadow, and I used it in the copper plate. And I'm going to continue this pattern on. Then I used some 0.5 millimeter uh, leather. And this is in the Distressed Pumpkin. And I did on this side, remember I did that fun little back and forth knot here last week. This is the same, except I'm doing it in the 0.5 millimeter. Now, I'm glad that this happened. I mean, sort of. You can see my leather broke here. So I'm going to show you how I fix that. And I'm also going to show you, you need to, this 0.5 millimeter is thin. It mostly works great, but once in a while, if you're pulling too hard, you're going to break it. So I'm going to show you how to fix that there. Okay. And then as we go along <clears throat> over here, I used our friend, the Celadon, but do you remember in our five stitch project? Those of you who are new to us may not remember that five stitch. Our five stitch, we show different macrame stitches and we show doubling up our threads. Um, and we don't necessarily show um, doubling up like with the same color. Sometimes we double up with two different colors of Ceylon. But I thought I'd throw that one down here as well because the two sizes of regular Ceylon and I've macrameed them together. You can also mix the two colors together, which would look great. Um, and I used an ADOT seed bead, of course, and that ADOT seed bead is not sitting here. Where did she go? I'm going to have to look. It's this one. Uh, Janice or Gita, throw it up on the, on the, um, on the screen somewhere between here and my workspace that little tube has uh, disappeared, but I'll show you which one that is. So I chose this color palette. <clears throat> you can see the color palette that I've got here. I just went through and I used some of the things that I had to create this color palette. You can choose your own adventure here, of course. I, again, felt like this was 
Montana in the winter. And this is the dyed rose bronze lined alabaster. Thanks, Gita. Gosh, you're so fast on that linking. It's right here. Look at how pretty it is. Oh, let me zoom. Let me zoom. That's what that zoom is for. Look at that beautiful color. I love it. So decide if you want, you know, a smaller palette of seed beads, a single color palette of Ceylon, whatever floats your boat with this. The other colors of that braid, there's that whiskey color, which would work beautifully with this and that kind of distressed green. I think they might call it sage um, color. We can check on it, but it's all there in the just in. The black leather here is a little more matte. The dye on here is a little more matte of a color. So they, they all are really exquisite. So let's start <clears throat> with looking at this first one here okay and i'm going to show you how i start it and i'm going to start it on this black piece over here and then we'll go over to the other piece there so let me get rid of these little seed beads here for the moment so i don't lose them and i'm actually going to take this stuff off for the moment as well. And let's just leave this kind of plain. The way that I attach this thread to my bead board is, or this cord rather, is I come in and I clamp it. But let me show you, this is such a thick piece to clamp that what I do is I open my clamper and I don't place the clamp on the cord itself, I kind of turn the cord to the side and it's kind of clamped along the inside here. Does that make sense? Then I'll do the same thing on the opposite end. So I've got a nice tight piece here to work with. Okay. So I'm not clamping it on the leather. I'm clamping it kind of over the leather, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to choose my thread and I'm going to do this with this green because it'll show up the celadon color. It'll show up against this black pretty well. <clears throat> now these little, they're kind of like a little flower motif, which I like a lot in the eight aughts. You could use sixes. Sixes might be a little tall, might be a little big, but try it out if you want. Okay. I'm going to start and I'm going to do some plain, that just that plain flat macrame the usual suspect, nothing different about it. Though this is round, this leather is round. So the knots have a tendency to want to slide a little bit. So I'm going to show you how I deal with that. I'm going to cut a shorter piece so I'm not dealing with a super long piece of thread right here. So um, I'm going to go with maybe about a yard, maybe a little over a yard. Um, just so I can uh, work with that. The piece that I actually cut to work with, I cut about two yards is what I did. So I'm going to come in from the back here and find the center of my cord. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit, you can see a little bit of space there. I can always cut this down a little bit if I need to, but I want to go fairly close, but not so close that it's butting up against my, my piece, right? Um, then uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do the flat macrame, the regular square knot, To start just like we do and this is a great skill builder we've got it over on bead shop see how this cord though wants to go around to the back like that so you kind of want to coax it to come up front what i do to help that coax is i'm going to add and i don't usually do this 
I'm going to add, whoops, let me get a little tighter in there. I'm going to add a little bit of GS hypo cement here. Okay. So I'm going to get my GS. I'm going to lay it along just the very top of that cord. That's going to add a little bit of bite and a little bit <clears throat> that'll help my cord adhere my regular Ceylon to adhere to my, my leather and kind of stay in place. And I'm going to cover it up. And when it dries, it's going to dry clear. We're never going to see it. Okay, but see how that helps everything to stay. And again, when you're gluing, folks, be use the glue sparingly. Okay, so it doesn't go all over the place. But see how that glue helps this to stabilize really nicely. Let me go over this. You can, of course, watch that skill builder. But I start here with my left-hand side. It's got that loop. The right-hand side goes over where that left-hand cord is coming out, under the center cord, and up through, <clears throat> pardon me, that left-hand loop and tighten. Okay, same thing on the other side. We're just going to do it reverse. The loop over the top of the center cord, left-hand cord comes over that right-hand cord, under the center leather cord, and out and up through that loop and tighten. Okay, now let's make a little flower, shall we? So I'll do, I want a contrasting color. So I'm going to take this terracotta <clears throat> as well as the, well, these are already in there, the, the, the bronze. I'll use those. Let me uh, zoom out just a hair here. This zoom feature, I feel so good about it. So with that flower, we're going to start with the petal. How did I do it? Let me make sure this is right. It's like a little four leaf clover here, right? So there's a single, a double, and a single. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a single in the terracotta. I'm going to slide that A dot. Remember, this is an A dot here. And I'm going to slide the opposite end. See how I'm pushing on it with my finger. I'm going to slide the Ceylon, the regular Ceylon, in from the opposite direction. Now, you can angle cut this a little bit, which is what I did when I was making that other piece. I angle cut it just a slight bit so it's easy to slide it through those A dots. You could also make a little uh, needle with the zap glue to stiffen it that way. But then I'm going to slide it up and it's going to nestle right there. Okay. Now I'm going to come around and I'm going to tie this thread. Usually when we do another square knot, I put the thread on the top of the cord here, right? This time I have to cage this or capture this thread. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go below my cord. Everything else is the same. It's just that the looping cord goes below this uh, center cord here. So the right hand cord comes over the left, under all of that, the center cord and the loop, and up and through that loop there. And can you see how that knot is formed and that knot is going to tighten along the back. Okay, so now let's do the little center. I wanted to try three, so I'm going to get one of these little, um, the A dots in the, the metal, and I'm going to get two of those bronze alabaster. See how this is like the little four leaf clover. Let's see if I can put a little center in that just for fun. I want to see if that works because <clears throat> you know me, I like to experiment 
just to check. And I suggest when you folks are making this piece, and I hope that you do, um, to kind of put your own spin on things. And this is a new little variation. If I can hold this bead in my fingers, there we go, go on there, thank you. And this goes on. I could also probably use a needle on the end, but the Ceylon, once it's doubled, especially this regular Ceylon, whoops, oh, it all ended in tears. Let me try and hold it, holding it with my right hand instead of my left. That's probably smarter. Um, but as I was saying, with that needle, if that needle, that Ceylon is doubling over the eye of that needle, um, it may be too thick to bring it through. So, okay, now we're back. Let me hold it here over my finger, pushing the beads up so the little tunnel opens. <clears throat> Take my other piece of Ceylon and I am sending it through the opposite direction here, like so. Open that little tunnel up. There we are. And let's tighten. Let's see how these three look, shall we? Darling, I think. Tighten it up. Make sure there's no little extra thread on either side. Make our loop. And remember, when we tighten... As we go underneath, that knot has to be under the cord. So we pass this loop under the center cord with the right side over the left, under the center, and tighten. Now let's do our final, um, our final little single bead, okay, which is this terracotta. here and send this one through the opposite way. You could also do just a line of beads. You don't have to do this little floral design, right? You can do whatever really floats your boat. I'm going to um, close that again and send this through. There we go. You could also wax this slightly maybe if you want it, but this is good here. So there we are. Okay, there's that little motif. So charming, I think. Now I'm going to do just some plain flat macrame. <laughs> Lorraine is saying, I love a challenge. I do. I do love a challenge. I don't shy away from a, at least a bead challenge. There we go. And then we're going to continue. It looks like I tied three pairs of knots below this. So one, that's one pair right there. And see how I'm pushing it up? I'm automatically kind of placing that thread as I go. I'm going to go a little bit faster here, and then we'll look at it on the other piece, and I'm going to show you how I finish it off. Okay, so there we go. Now we're ready for our next motif. Okay. So, oh, Gita's having some issues linking. Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry about that. No worries. I'm not sure. Um, I'm excluded from the Facebook feed. Huh. Facebook is so, uh, can be so persnickety. No worries, Gita. I'm not there. Do your best with the linking. So sorry about that. Um, so let's switch this over and let's go to the other sample. And I'm going to show you how I finish it off. So here's this one. And this one doesn't have that little center. So let me go here. And let me get my clamp and clamp that sucker down. 
and clamp this on this side. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to make one more little flower motif here. Okay, so let me get my let me get my beads out from over here. And I'm going to do a single And try out, if you want this motif to be a little more, um, a little larger, again, you could try it with the six aughts. You could mix the six and the eight aughts as well. Um, it just depends on, um, you know, what look you like. Clip that again, bring that through and down. Hopefully I'm in the in the shot well enough. Yeah, this zoom ability is making me happy. It only took me a few tries to figure out this new configuration, but I got it. So there's that single eight. Let's put in these two eights in the Picasso. Gosh, we have so many of you watching today. I love it. It must be because there's a holiday vacation going on. Thank you all so much for being here um, for this year-end wrap. You can go into or search year-end wrap and see some of the other ones I've made in years past. It's kind of a fun way to end our time together okay oh and kim is saying on the row with three seeds you could use two uh the new yeah miyuki spacers sure that would look great and you actually read my mind i don't have it here but we've got the new 15s kim that are coming and i've been working on an earring with the 15s and i've been using the Miyuki spacers with them. And if you go to my um, my Instagram at BeadKate, I posted a little uh, teaser. I'm not sure if it has the spacers in it yet, but um, in the photo that I posted, but I think you'll um, I think you'll like it. I can't wait to share it with you. Here's that one. See how these just slide right into place. It is so super satisfying, this little motif here. And then remember, we go under and we go through. And it looks like I'm going to say, I'm going to tie three more plain knots here. Plain, you know, right and left square knots. It would also look pretty with this motif, then maybe another single, you know, a little more space motif, another single, you know, whatever, uh, whatever works. Kim is asking, um, she just joined, this is our new round five millimeter braided leather. Um, we just launched it yesterday. So it's a uh, really super satisfying to work with. It's a little chunkier. Um, but again, you could use this motif, these same motifs on flat leather. This spiral that's coming up next wouldn't work quite as well on the flat, but this uh, flat macrame would work nicely. So now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to add, and I should have added it a little sooner. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to add a little bit of GS there. Slide that down. Add a little more of that GS there. And I'm going to tie a last set of knots there. So it glues down. I'm going to add a little bit more there to the side and there to the side. You can always glue this from the back 
to make sure that you have no glue showing on the front. Since this is demo time, I'm kind of doing this at the top so you can see it, okay? And now uh, I'm gonna add just a touch there and a touch there. We sell this bolo cord by the yard, this braided cord. So you can get, I have a yard here on my table. Okay, so a yard is plenty for you to work with. So now I'm going to just add that one more drop of glue along the top. This will dry clear. I will let that sit uh, overnight um, before I trim it off. But for now, I'm going to just trim my ends just a touch so I don't have all of this. And Gita, I can see you right here. So I think you're good. So we're going to leave that. Okay. Leave that there. And I found, I knew I had put it right here for me to grab. I just couldn't see it. Here's our other braided bolo. Okay. This is the smaller one. This is our three millimeter. And you've seen me use this before with our crimps. So you can kind of see visually the difference between the five and the three. This would also look beautiful with this same type of treatment here. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and look at our second section, which is this one here. Okay, so let me go back to the black piece of leather, which is this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut down. Well, I guess I won't cut it down. I'll just keep it out of the way. Okay, so let me, uh, let me show you here. The way that I started this, this piece, let me clamp it. There we go. Is I used a one millimeter and I've got some one millimeter in this denim. Okay. And so I took out, um, I'm going to say maybe a yard, perhaps. Let me measure out a yard. I did. It was about a yard. I'm going to go a little smaller so I'm not. I'm going to go about two feet here, just so I don't have too much to work with. But again, this all depends on how much, how long you want to make each section, right? So here, I've bent the wire, folded the, the wire, folded the leather, the one millimeter, over here. And there's just a small piece coming out here. Okay, and uh, the longer piece over here. And I make, I go through and I make, I'm actually going to go this way, though it doesn't really matter. I make a lark's head knot over the top. Okay, like that. And so, but what does matter is this short piece needs to be on top. So hang on a second. Let me put it this way so that short piece is on top and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, here we go. All right. So now I'm going to knot this a little ways along and then you're going to see what I do with the top of this. So remember when I did this piece, I'm knotting with just one um, one leg of the leather. So I'm making my loop, taking this long end, making my loop, going under the leather and up through the loop like so. Okay. And I continue to do that very same technique over the leather, under the leather, up through the loop. 
and tightening it down. Okay, right here, loop under the leather, up through the loop, and tighten. I'm going to continue to do that. And as this twists, you can see that the ridge that the macrame is forming will spiral around this base cord. Now, as you go, your cord, your base cord is going to twist a little bit. See how it's starting to twist? So you just kind of hang with it. I kind of twist it back. I make the, um, oh, I, this is what I wanted to show you. Let me get a little, let me get a little tighter here. It did just what I was hoping it would. See how this knot that I've just made, it doesn't look quite the same, right? It's a scallop rather than a diagonal. So when that happens, when you see that, what you want to do is you want to undo this. You want to unclamp your leather and you kind of want to twist it back so you are, um, so you're moving See, now that's correct. So you're moving, you're kind of rotating the leather back. So you're still tying the knot. I'm doing it on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? So you just continue to do that until you kind of get here towards the center. Then I'm going to show you how I finish it off. See, it's still knotting correctly. And here, I think it's going to make... No, it's still doing it. Good job. Good job, me. But see how now it's way over here, so I'm going to have to unclamp it and turn it again. Okay, so take a look at how this spiral, doesn't that look nice? I love how the spiral looks in this leather. And you can continue on, go as, as long as you'd like, but let me show you how I close it off and I'm going to close it off this way and I'll close it off on the top as well. What I'll do is I can kind of undo it here at the top if I want um, so that that top knot here in this section doesn't look funny, right? And I push it down. Let me unclamp it from the bottom and I'm going to hold it this way. All right. So now I'm going to do a silk wrap. To close this off. So let me get some thread. This is the bronze again. I'm going to cut kind of a short piece. It's less than a foot, maybe about 10 inches. And this is the important part for this. I'm going to hold this so when I silk wrap, I start my silk wrap up against this macrame section. Okay, so I'm going to make my loop for the silk wrap. Lay that loop on top of my leather. We've got the silk wrapping in our skill builders, but essentially I've made my loop holding it under my thumb and kind of placing that loop along that, um, along that leather that's there. Okay. Now with the long end of the sealon holding all of this tightly, I'm going to come in and I'm going to wrap, make that first wrap. And then I'm going to continue to wrap the sealon loop and capture that leather tail under my wrap. And I don't know six, eight, whatever looks right to you. Let me see how many wraps this is. Two, four, six, seven. I'll go with seven. Can you see that there? Now, 
instead of my next wrap coming all the way around, I'm going to come in. This loop wants to twist, so I need to hold it untwisted. I'm going to come around and I'm going to send the tail of my Ceylon through that loop, hold it tight, and then see on the opposite end how I pull that loop in. It's going to capture this tail underneath my wrapping as it pulls underneath. So I inch it up as I tighten. And watch it now. It's going to pop under. Whoops, and I popped it under too far. So let me pop it back. There we go. Now it's tightened under there. I'm going to tighten both. And I'm also going to try and close up this wrap a little bit here. <clears throat> tighten it. Come in. And clip. And clip this one. And look at how nice and neat that section is. Okay, let me get this one over here. So that's how to start it. This is exactly how we'd finish it as well. So I use the celadon here. So I'm going to do this a little bit faster and just close this off. So here's my end. Again, I'm going to put all of this. <clears throat> over here, so I'm holding it at my right hand. Get my loop, place it on, place that first wrap nice and tight, and then continue on. And I did two, four, six, I did seven wraps here as well. I guess that's what I liked. And you can just make it visually match. One side might be a little more tightly wrapped than the other. You don't have to get too precious with counting the wraps, but if you want to, that's fine as well. This comes around through the loop and tighten. Okay, pulling under, there it goes, and then pulling on both to tighten it up. No glue is needed. I rarely glue a silk wrap unless I'm silk wrapping with leather. There and there, and there. Okay, this is kind of set, that one up there. So let me... Uh, let me just show you those two. Let me grab my thread burner. Let's hope that I have a thread burner that has a, yeah, here we go, that has a, <laughs> a working battery. I'm going to come in and singe this away. I know I said I'd cut it off tomorrow, but these little ends are kind of making me crazy. And if I singe it right, it should be fine. There we go. When you use a thread burner, folks, you want to make sure that you're using it in a well-ventilated area because it is burning through this thread. So you don't want to hover over it. You want to make sure that you've got some ventilation here. I get my thread burner in place. I press the button and it'll slice right through. Turn that burner on and just tap that end a little bit. There we go. So now we have two sections, okay? Let's look at our third, our third friend over here. Now, I just wanted something kind of plain, right? Nothing super fancy pants over here. And so I just went to our usual suspect, which is our flat macrame. 
Okay, so, and what I did here, and I'll point this out so you don't make the same mistake. See how this looks a little funny right there. The knot is kind of up here at the top. What I did was I didn't remember uh, this one here, how nicely I glued it and it looks all nice and clean. This is exactly how you're going to start this one. This one I didn't glue. So things kind of actually turned around and went kind of wonky. So make sure you do those first knots nice and clean and glued. It's not going to be noticed, so I'm not stressing about it, but I wanted to point it out. So if that happened to you, you understand what's going on. So if you do that first knot, glue things down and then macrame over that glued section a little bit, your thread isn't going to shift. And this just looks like shifted thread. Let's go see how I can get in there real tight. You can see that's not the prettiest, but it's also not the end of the world. Okay, so what I did was I used the antique copper seed bead, the terracotta. Then I brought in your friend and mine, the shadow, the regular size shadow. And then I did two plain knots in between. Uh, that's one set. I think I did two sets to kind of... Um, space them out just a little bit. Then let's go for the terracotta. And what I did for these was I placed the beads opposite one another. They're not offset, they're opposite. Okay, so I place an A dot on either side and then I tie that square knot there. Oh, I so lied to you. I lied, I lied, I lied. Let me show you. And I show you how I know I lied. See, we see that space opening up. And I remember when I was making this piece, I thought, oh, yeah, I really want to expose some of the leather underneath it. So see here how th these actually are offset. See how there's a strand going across that opening there? There's no strand going across that opening here. When you make a piece and then <laughs> set it down and then come back to it, you may forget. So you need to learn how to um, read your macrame. And that's just what I did here. So I slide this up. That bead is in the loop. I tie my knot. See, there's that slant. Now I bring this bead on the left side. But you can also do them across so that they're not offset. And especially if you have a high contrasting thread color, it might be kind of fun to see the opening of that leather that's right there. There you go. That looks correct. And then I tied two knots, one and two. But you decide what works out best for you. There you go. Now I'm going to add that A dot in. And it goes on this side on my right. Oops. These A dots can be a little persnickety because they are hollow on the inside. So that might give you a little bit of sass. There you go. Let me tighten this and tighten that. There we are, and bring the one in from the left, and tighten. And now I'm just going to finish this off. I, again, I could make this longer, but this cord is fairly chunky at five millimeters, okay? And I don't want too much of this embellishment to wrap too far around my wrist, if that makes sense. Because with this chunkiness of this cord, um, I want these little sections to feel like beads, I guess. I don't know. If that makes sense, that's what my thinking is behind this anyway. So 
try it out a little bit longer if you want, right? Um, let me, I didn't put the lid on this. Let me clear this glue off. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of glue here at the top. Finish it off just like I finished the other one. I could also silk wrap the end like I did the leather, but I don't really want to. I want this to kind of terminate on its own. GS Hypo is the one to use for this maneuver. I wouldn't use Zap here. Zap has a tendency to stiffen your threads kind of beyond what you want to happen, or at least what I want to happen. So GS is the way I'm going here. I'm going to tie one more knot. See how I put that GS right at the, right there at that section where the, the C-Lon is going to come in. I'm going to add even just a hair more. I'm worried that this is, I'm flying without a net underneath this. I don't have a little baggy, which is against my principles, but it's the end of the year. There we go. So now, now I am going to put the lid back in here. So bear with me here just a second. We all know that's the biggest trick to using the GS is getting the lid back on. Tighten that up. Really make sure that everything is saturating in there. I'm going to cut the tails away, but I'll singe those in, in a minute. And no, this could be in real life, honestly, if I were making this as a piece that I would sell, I would probably work on the back, okay, like this, um, so that I don't see any glue. But if you look at this one that I did earlier, you don't see any glue on the front if you're really very careful, okay? So now we've got three sections. We've got this one that has the little flower motif, this one that has the spiral knot, this one that has just the plain macrame, so let's go to this friend over here. Okay. Now this one is going to take a, a little explaining. I've got some explaining to do. So this is the 0.5 millimeter. And I chose 0.5 millimeter just because I wanted a variety of materials in this piece. What I didn't do because I was just rolling along merrily and not paying any attention. I didn't go through and check my leather. The 0.5, and I kind of looked at it visually and said, oh yeah, that looks fine. But when you're working with the 0.5, I make it a habit to run that 0.5 through my hands to make sure that there's no little tiny spot in there that's a flaw. So as I was knotting, there was a weak point and this broke. So I'm going to fix it. And then I'm going to show you how I started this and then we're going to come back to that. So I don't need that much actually left for this. So I'm going to cut there's something under here. Oh, there's seed beads under this tray. There we go. I'm like, why is this tray moving? The mystery of the haunted tray. There we go. I'm going to get another piece of the pumpkin. This time, folks, I am going to use my zap glue. Now, this little maneuver is not for the faint hearted, but I think it's going to work. So I'm going to come in, let me turn this a little bit to expose the side here. And then again, I'm going to show you how I start it, but I want to show you how I mend this. I'm going to come in and I'm not going to do this on the flaw. I'm going to cut back from the flaw a little bit. And if you don't have enough space here, unknot a couple of your knots. This is sort of like the Ali Mori splice that we've done in the past. I'm actually going to 
No, that looks about right. I'm not going to screw around with that too much. I'm going to get my zap and I'm going to add it on the end of that leather. Not too much, like so. Now I'm going to get my other piece of leather and I'm just going to have them kiss right here. I need to get a little closer. This is way out of my focal range. And I'm going to get that baggie that I put underneath. I'm going to grab the splice with my baggie and hold it together. So that it splices. Now the splice isn't all that stable yet. And I've made, I would try maybe if I wasn't doing this in demo time so you could see it, I'd try and maybe make that splice a little bit smaller. Like a little, you know, not, don't have the overlay so much. What am I trying to say? I'd have the overlay shorter, not this long. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So I added a little bit more glue there. I'm going to grab it and smoosh it, for the lack of a better technical term, with my plastic baggie here. And this is my glue of choice for this, because this zap, you can see I'm not pulling it too tight, but it's there, OK? So I need to set this aside for the moment. So I'm going to let this hold, OK? Now we're going to put this aside. Let me bring my friend the black one in here, the, the black cord. And let me clamp that down. And then let me show you how I start this. <clears throat> so if you remember, this is like that same one I did on Free Tip Friday, where I macrame to the left, to the left, to the left and then to the right, to the right, to the right. And when I switched from the right to the left, I added a bead on that cord when I was done. To the right, to the right, to the right, add the bead. Then to the left, to the left, to the left, add the bead. Okay, so let me show you how I do that. So let me get a piece of that 0.5 millimeter. This is the Distress Pumpkin. This isn't a really long piece but I'm going to come in and I'm going to do what I didn't do before, which is kind of give it a little, a little shake, a little pull, just to make sure I'm pretty confident that that's going to stick together pretty nicely or hold together pretty nicely. Let me go. Uh, I could also do this technique with flat leather for sure. The only thing that I think wouldn't look quite as right is this one with the round. Though you could try it for sure, but the round base and this single loop knot go together really nicely here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna find the center of my cord, put it underneath this black leather, okay? And I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, make my loop, go through. It's like we're doing the spiral macrame, right? Remember how when we do knots just going on one side, the macrame instead of being flat is a spiral, is a twist. So I'm going to do this for um, five. five knots. And you know what? I think I started this. I was talking and not paying attention. Let me start this again. Have your all at the ready, just in case. And also, folks, this, since this is round, it's doing that same thing that it did before. Um, 
my flat macrame wants to twist around to the back. So let me get a little bit of that GS and put it there. That's going to grab the leather and hold it in place. So let me start this again. I'm going to find the center of my leather. I'm going to wrap it around the back. I'm going to start with the loop going to the left. Going to the left. There we go. And I'm going to tie. See how that doesn't move now with that little bit of glue? You want to pull it tight. You don't want to put a whole bunch of stress on this leather either. Let me get a little tighter in there. Okay, there we go. And to the left, that's five. I want this to keep being flat, so I don't want to tie so many that it's going to start to curl. I'm going to do five. I might have done six on the other one. I'll count it when I grab it, but I'm going to do five here. Now, before I switch, because I'm tying to the left, before I switch to start making the loop with the right-hand side, I'm going to put a bead on. And this regular size shadow is perfect for that. Okay? So now I'm going to start looping with the right-hand side. So I'm going to finish up. Let me see what this, I think I finished with one last loop. Yeah. To the left to capture that bead. Now I'm going to start looping from the right. Okay. So here, there's my loop to the right. And I need to do five of those. One loop to the right, two, the close-ups are better, aren't they? Thank you, Sandra. I knew I could get it. I just had to really practice and put my mind to it. My goal is to give you the absolute best viewing experience. So I, I hope this is better. So this is five, I think. And let me show you also how I count them. We count those little scallops, right? One, two, three, four, five. Whoops, I did six. Five. Now I'm going to add my bead. And I'm going to tie that last one. Okay, and I want to make sure that that little bead sits to the side, right? Hugs the side of that cord. There we go. So now I go back to the left. Okay. And that's a correct observation that Janice made. Whatever I do on the side, you know, when I knot on the side, if I loop on the left, the knot is going to sit on the right, if that makes sense. Okay. So I think I'm at four. Let me count. One, two, three, four. No, that was actually at five. So let me get that one there. And you can see it's twisting a little bit, but it just kind of looks like a little bit of a zigzag. If you go any further than maybe these six knots, it might start to look a little funny. There we go. And so now I'll switch it. 
Okay, so I'll loop to the right and continue on. So let's take a look at the one that I mended. Okay, so let's take this off and this off and go back to our friend that we mended. Before I do that, I'm going to use my thread burner. We're going to keep these little ends out of the way. I'm going to thread burn this end. If you don't have a thread burner, treat yourself to an end of the year gift. We carry a thread burner that's a little higher end. This is the tried and true one that we've used for years and years. I carried it at my store. We carried it uh, at bead shop back in the day. Um, it's the perfect end thread burner. It's the, it's the one, um, it's the one, I'll tell you. Uh, we also have the heads that you can replace them. So, and if you're gonna store that thread burner, store it with the battery out. Okay, so your battery, batteries don't leak like they used to, but you don't want that battery to leak. Okay, so here's our three. Let's go to this fourth one and let's take a look at that mend that I made. Let me put this back on our back on our board. Right? We want to be careful not to harm anything up there. Right? And we want to bring this down here. And let's take a look at that splice that I did. Let me get a little bit closer and let's hope that this, if we have to finish it off a different way, I will, but let's take a look. So here, I kind of, it, it broke kind of in the middle of a, um, of a knotted section, okay? So I need to loop over here. I'm going to send this through. I'm not going to tug on it super tight. My goal is to just tie the knot beyond this place. So let me see. So see how I'm kind of finagling that in. There we go. Loop on this side. Tie the knot over here. This is, how many do I have in between on this one? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the bead was in the seventh. I thought I might have gone just a little bit longer. So there's the splice. So kind of baby the splice through the knot. Don't pull it too tight. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little bit of glue underneath there. so that if something happens, and this is the GS this time, not the zap that I did the splice with. If the splice comes undone or something, this GS is gonna hold it. So I'm gonna be really careful to send that in through. I'm gonna untwist it because I wanna get this exactly seated where I want it to be. Pull it around. Push that down right there. Yeah, I'm holding my breath too, my mom's saying. There we go. I don't think that's, oh, I pulled too hard. Okay. Here's the second way that I'm going to fix this. I'm glad I'm doing this on air so you can see how I would do this. I am going to, let me see, was that a collective groan I heard from everybody around the world? Or was that just me? I can see Janice. <laughs> I can see Janice through the screen. She's leaning in all that much closer saying <laughs> now she's laughing how is kate ever gonna fix this i'm gonna show you folks i had a feeling i wasn't sure about the splice i thought i could do it 
I'm going to get myself a collapsible eye needle. This is the medium. If you don't have every single needle in your stash, you are missing the boat because thankfully in my needle stash, I have a whole bunch of needles. So see how this collapsible eye is so big and it's going, oh, Janice, you just asked, could you use a needle? We share one brain. It's really true. So see how I can thread it through the eye. See how I just shoved that all underneath. And again, if I were doing this in a real scenario and not a demo, I would have turned this over and done this all from the back. Okay, so any little imperfection that might show is going to be on the back, but I'm doing it on the front right now. So I've used that all to open this a little trough up. I'm going to, this needle has a little twist on the end, so I'm grabbing that, that uh, leather in the twist of the needle so it doesn't pull out. There we go. And now I'm just going to slide it through. And if I need a little help pulling that through, I'm going to help it with my pliers just gently. There it goes. See that? Fab. Now, let me pull that all out. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? I'm going to slide this down. I'm going to add a little bit of glue. I'm going to take this tail that broke. I'm going to lay it along here. And I'm just going to knot like this strand and this strand don't exist. I am going to give myself a little bit of glue here. A little bit of glue here. Honestly, with this mend, I could have just undone it and used a fresh piece of leather. But what if we're doing this and you're in the middle of like a really long piece that you don't want to get rid of, right? So, or you don't want to redo. So I'm going to make my loop because the loop whoops, the loop is going from to the left. I'm going then the right underneath. I want to catch that little end. I want to come in. I'm going to tie my knot. And this is just going to tighten up. Now we might see a little bit of a bump there, but hardly. So touch more glue. And then I'm going to knot a couple. And let's see if it writes itself. That's the other thing. You know, when you're knotting a piece, let's say, I want this to come over just a little bit more here. If this were actually behind it. There we go. That's better. When you're tying knots, if you understand the basic engineering of a knot, you can kind of reverse engineer what you're doing. So if you have to mend something or you know, come back through and fix it or whatever, you'll kind of understand how the knot should be seated, if that makes any sense. So practicing our basics, I've got a section on bead shop in our skill builders where we talk about um, knots and we have Kate's basic favorite knots. So if you're not sure sometimes what to make or what to design. Go ahead and work on some of your basic skills. And that will hold you in good stead. 
look, we can hardly see. This is a little not my favorite, but it's not the end of the world either, right? And it's in there. No one is ever going to see that. So let me zoom out a little bit so we're not right on top of it. And let's continue to just make our little closure. And then I'll show you how I'd close this. Then we've got one more section. Okay. It's all in uh, the knot pendium. That is correct. The knot pendium. Let me add my bead here. And we will continue. Let me move that precious needle out of the way. There we are. And then uh, now I'm looping to the right. Oh, sorry, looping to the right. That's why when I uh, when we've got our 15s, I am really doing a lot of seed bead practice. I sent the whole bunch to Emily, and she's creating some really beautiful. She's creating a spiral rope actually with the 15s. That's going to be just incredible. Uh, but I needed to practice my brick stitch, so that's why I'm working brick stitch with um, with the 15s. I think it's going to be pretty nice. But that's why, you know, practice, practice. Seed beads, I, seed beads and I are not natural compatriots, um, though I've gotten a lot easier with seed beads over the years. I always say my the only seed bead stitch that I knew how to do for years and years was peyote stitch. Peyote stitch is something that I'm super familiar with and super easy for me to do. But otherwise, um, with the fancier stitches, I really have to stop and think and lay it out. So, um, so I'm doing that practicing there. Look at how nice this section looks. I love this kind of zigzag back and forth kind of feel. It's very Lombard Street, <laughs> an ode to my favorite city. Let's add a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue there little bit of glue there. Again, I would also add some glue to the back. Be, don't be overly generous with the glue, but you want to make sure that the glue reaches every place that you need it to reach. And again, one of those little tricks when I tie my last knot is I come in and I hit it there and there. I have a friend who's uh, dad, uh, up until just recently, they finally moved, uh, lived on Lombard. And uh, it's a beautiful, it's always fun to drive down. Beautiful street in the Pacific Heights neighborhood of San Francisco. There we go. And we will let this sit and dry and then we'll come in and we'll clip. Okay, and I'm using the Zeron thread snips for that. Again, I am really prematurely cutting these. Let me do as I say and not as I do, and really let this sit overnight undisturbed. I'll give it just a little bit of extra glue there, and we'll let that go. But that's the secret to perfecting your gluing is a really good, uh, just let that glue rest. Okay, let's do our next one. This has a little bit of space, a little too much space for my taste. So um, let me slide it. That's all right. I'm not going to screw with it. We've got this one, then I've got one more that I want to show you, and I hope I remember how I did it. So this one here is just our same friend, our flat macrame. So let me go ahead and clamp this to the board. Then I'll untangle, and then we'll talk about how we did this. That's a little too close. 
Um, I don't like the way that that's clamping. So let me go to my alternate clamping technique. I'll show you that. I'm going to get a piece of wax linen, though you could use any scrap, but I happen to have a piece of wax linen here. If things are too close here and you don't want to crimp or clamp and have something get damaged, like I especially, I don't want to clamp on that, on that leather. I'm going to come in with my little piece of stunt piece of wax linen, or it could be your kitchen twine or whatever. But see how I'm going to put that on the board? Now I don't, this is in working distance for me, and none of this is going to get damaged. Okay, <clears throat> so now let me untangle this business here. Hold that thought. get our all to help us untie that knot. I could also just clip my thread because I've got plenty of thread here, but I'm stubborn and I want this knot to come undone rather than cutting my thread. There we go. Okay. So what I have here is the flat macrame knot. I'm going to get a little closer to it in just a second so you can see. Let me get this one over here, hopefully without getting that bead off of it. Okay. So here, let me get a little tighter. Here's the Celadon, regular Ceylon. Now this could be two color as well. I could use one strand of Celadon and one strand of the bronze. I smushed this up a little bit, so I'm going to use my awl to spread these stitches back out. I'm going to straighten everything out there. There we go. So remember how I mentioned our five stitch bracelet and we use our Ceylon, we stack our Ceylon together to make our, our thread a little bit thicker and we can also do it to add a little more color to the stitch. So I just started it as I would my regular flat macrame, right? Regular flat macrame, 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 and then I uh, just add my beads in. And since the beads aren't going, won't go on a doubled strand like this, I put them just on a single strand and then tie them both, hold them together. Okay, so I would do that by sliding this thread this bead on this thread. I know we're running over just a little bit. I'm so close to being done. And it's the year end wrap, so I'm not going to rush myself. We're just going to keep going. And I'm going to put one on this side. Plus, I think you folks are having fun watching all of these stitches here. At least I hope you are. So see on a single like this and like this. And then I'll come in and I'll tie them. And these I'm kind of tying across from each other like that. Okay, so that's it. And you can do this as long as you'd like, as many as you'd like. Just continue on and then you're going to terminate it just like we did this one over here with our glue, okay? Now, last but not least, I have this kind of fun little section here. And this kind of plays on that half hitch technique, and it's hard to see because I've done it tone on tone. So I'm gonna do it on this black one so you can see it. here. Um, <clears throat> where's my other clamp? There it is. This one, you kind of start in the middle 
Okay, and you're, you'll see why. Let me cut, I'm going to cut about a yard of this blue cord. Where did my distressed denim go? I don't know. So I'm going to do it instead with this natural. It'll be easier for you to see anyway. I'm going to cut about a yard. Again, your mileage may vary if you want it to be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but this is about 36 inches. That's probably plenty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that center, like that center of the section that I want to do, and I tie a lark's head knot. Okay. Now I'm going to work up and then down from this knot. So I'm going to take the cord that's at the top. I'm going to loop over the cord and tighten. Actually, wrong way. I knew I was going to do it the wrong way. I can see, though, by what the result was. I'm going to loop under the cord. There we go. Go through the loop and tighten. And now I'm going to loop over the cord, up through the loop, and tighten. Under the cord, through the loop, whoops, and tighten. Under through the loop and tighten. You may remember me doing this when I did the lark's head knots across the top for um, our uh, Apple Watch project. Did I just go over or under? I went under. That's just how I did this. Okay, and over. I need to do it a little bit faster or I'll lose my place. And under. Something is off. I'm going to take this out. Sometimes when I explain and do, I lose my place. Let me take this back. I want to take it back to right there. Okay, that was under. There we go. And over. No, nope, that's still wrong. So essentially, I think this one wanted to be over. That's what screwed me up. There we go. You want to just go back and forth alternating between, yeah, see, that looks right over and under. And you're going to make a series of lark's heads across the side of your leather. I'm doing it again. Over. There we go. That's right. And see how it makes that little scallop. There we go. Over. And under. Now, I'm going to do the same on this bottom. Okay? And I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to start from the left now. And I'm going to go over and under. You could also do it all one direction. You won't have this scallop effect. You'll have a, um, like that little kind of loop effect. Over. I have to keep telling myself, and under. 
There we go. So see how I'm creating a series of scallops here and that series of scallops on this side. I'm a little screwy over there. So I'm just going to back it up. Remember how I told you a couple of shows ago that sometimes I get confused about my right and my left? This is one of those times. There we go. That looks more correct. So I think if that one goes over to start, this one has to go under to start. No, it doesn't. Over. There we go. There we go. See, there's that little scallop. And you can create this technique by going back and forth along this piece. So now if I want this to go to the other side, I just bring this to the other side, right? And then I start my over under loop. And it'll bring that series of little scallops to the other side, over, and then under. Sorry, it took me a second to get in my groove for that one. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see that overall effect. There we go. And you could place some beads in these scallops if you wanted but I kind of like the way that this goes back and forth. And I might do short bursts of like three and three, right? And Adrienne, that's a really great suggestion. I could get one of those larger beads like our, these guys here, and then this could go in the center and then you could work your way out. That would look really cool too, for sure, okay? Now the closure for this, I am going way over, but it's year-end wrap. What am I supposed to do here, right? Let's go ahead and take a look here at how this closes and how I would do this. Let me zoom back and then we'll bring this show to a close. I will simply begin by measuring my length. I like a wrap bracelet. If I'm gonna do a three wrap, I want this to be probably about 21 inches or so with the clasp, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clip a little bit of this away and I'm gonna glue one end of this in so you can see it. Then I'm gonna wrap it and then I'll go ahead and finish it off later and you'll, you'll see it up, I'll take a photo for you. This header that I did here, it's about three and a half inches. It's a little long. So I'm gonna cut it back to about two inches there, okay? So I'm gonna use my, actually my Zuron wire cutters here. And I'm just gonna give myself a nice cut in the center. Then I'm gonna double check. I wanna make sure that my clasp is all ready to go. The opening in one side is good. The opening on the other side is good. And I keep them closed together, okay? I don't wanna glue one side on and then the other. I always glue them. I always keep them closed. You do want to make sure, however, that you're not messy with the glue and accidentally glue this clasp closed. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice away a little bit of the extra leather, just thinning this end out just a touch so it's a little 
easier. See, that slides in the clasp a little bit better. So now this is when I use zap. So I'm going to take my zap glue. I'm going to add some in the very bottom. I'm going to add a little bit of zap on the tip of that cord and also around the sides. I don't want a whole bunch. I, I want enough so that it's going to adhere, but I don't want to put so much glue that it's going to, when I push this leather in, that it's going to flow outside of the clasp and be really messy. But I want to push this cord in as much as I can. I can feel the cord kind of pushing on the clasp. I also want to make sure that no glue has seeped through, which it hasn't, so it's not going to glue this closed. And I'm just going to let that sit. Now, when this cures in a few minutes, I would go ahead, this may come off, so I don't want to do it too much here, but I'm going to give myself an idea of, I'm going to take my hand out of camera just for a second because I need to see what I'm doing here. There we go. Bear with me here just a second. Here, take a look at that for the moment. <laughs> Let me put something in the, in the shot while I'm struggling to get this around my, my wrist. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to give myself a measurement and I'm going to see, okay, this I'm going to have to come to about right here and I need some space because this leather is a little stiff. I want to get, you know, like the tip of my finger underneath there because th this is going to sit a little more like a bangle. What it looks like now is a hot mess because of all these threads, but you'll finish this off. We'll glue it nicely. And then I'll come in and really size it perfectly. But I need to wrap it around and then figure where this is going to close. So I'm going to grab it here and then I'm going to give you a measurement. Okay. Um, Zap will work like super glue, so you do need to be very careful not to glue yourself to any of the leather anywhere, right? But you just need to be cautious as you're working it. And this comes out to about, it's about 21 and three quarters inches about from my wrist. And my wrist measures six and a half inches. Okay. So that, my friends, let me get that out of the way, is all she wrote on this year-end wrap. Again, I'm sorry we went over a little bit, but I hope you, I know that so many of you are on vacation, and hopefully you enjoyed our little bit of extended time together today. So yes, this is, this project is called legend named after my legends of the fall inspiration kind of has that turn of the century turn to the 20th century montana feel that was my ode so i'm going to continue on i'll finish this one i'll finish this leather and I'll put the clasp on it, and then the year-end wrap will be a wrap. So, of course, my friends, you can find, whew, that was epic, wasn't it? Uh, you can find this project under um, legend on beadshop.com. Um, I'll finish it up. We'll have the finished photo up. But I'm really excited to see what you folks are going to make. Uh, with this as inspiration. I am going to be on Friday for Free Tip Friday, so I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social at beadshop.com on our Instagram, our wonderful group, the Facebook Bead Table, and hit that like, subscribe, and notification button over on YouTube. 
the more social engagement we get, the more that algorithm sends us out into the world. So we appreciate that so much. And of course, you can find all of the information on the project legend and the products from today's broadcast right on our website at beadshop.com. Whew. Epic. Janice looks kind of tired. I can see her through the screen. She's waving at everybody. That was an epic one for the ages. I will be on uh, for a free tip Friday, our last show of the year. I'm going to go over some of my favorite projects. I'm going to show you. I've got a just a whole ton of them here. We're going to go over them. We're just going to look at them. It'll be like a, a, a beauty show, a, 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 a runway of all of our favorites. I'm also, and Janice is going to go on with me, right, JP? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying to look at you. What am I saying? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't read your lips. I'm sorry. Janice isn't going on with me, but I have no idea what she's saying. Hi, JP. Hi. Can you add me? So am I, is everyone oh, seeing me? You added yourself. Yes. There you go. Good job. <laughs> I just, just wanted to say happy surprise. new year. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I look a mess. I look a mess. No, you look but... amazing. I love it. And I love how your door just closed. Your back door just that, closed. That was Eli. <laughs> that was Eli. That was I love it. Here. Anyway, you did a great, a wonderful it. project today. Wonderful. Wasn't it crazy? Do you want to come on with me on Friday or are you busy? I'm going on a girl's oh, trip with yeah, my you're daughter. Good. I'm sorry. I think that's Oh, it's okay that I'm glad you jumped on today. I was just going to say, we're going to go over some of your favorite projects, Janice, some of my favorite projects. And you know what we're going to do? I haven't even told you this yeah. and we're going to do it. We're going to do a few giveaways. We're going to oh, give away great. some tickets on Friday. Great. What do you think? Great. Yes. Love it. Yes. Love so it. join yeah. me on Friday. Sans Janice. Janice will be enjoying her New Year's. I'll come on for the last show of the year and we'll do some gift certificate giveaways on Friday and we'll have a runway show of our favorites. So my dear friends and to you, Janice, and to all of our viewers all over, we can't thank you enough for uh, everything, all of your support that you've given us this new year. And Janice, I love that you jumped on. I love that you have the power in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. I love that you love it. Um, and I hope that you folks love the Zoom. I'm getting better. It looked like a pretty good show. So, all right. You did great, Kate. You did great and it was sharp and clear. And hopefully everyone will get Gita back on linking, hopefully. Yes. We'll, and, get all, uh, we'll work it all out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It will. So uh, thank you, JP. Thank all yeah. of you all. And I will see you on Friday. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.